Hi, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And today we're going to be looking at something a little bit different. It's a very basic text effect and one of you asked how it could be done in motion. But that got me to thinking that there are some interesting tricks that you could use to optimize the whole effect. Okay, so in this instance I'm going to do something different again, which is to create a Final Cut title. But if you just want to do this as a motion project, select the standard motion project. I'm going to select Final Cut Title, 1920-1080. I've got frame rate of 24 and a duration of 3 seconds. So I'm going to open that up. The first thing I'm going to do is to come to the top here and make a new group. So Object New Group. I'm going to move that to the back of the project and I'm going to take the title background and I'm going to move it out into that group because I don't want to interfere with that. Then I just to make this a little bit more interesting so we don't have to look at this title background graphic, I'm just going to import a picture into that group. You don't have to do this, it's just to make the tutorial a little bit more fun to look at. So the next thing I'm going to do is come up to this top group here and I'm going to add a color solid. So add object generators, image generators, color solid. Come over to the inspector, click on the color swatch and make it white. So then I want to come down to the rectangle mask tool and holding down the shift key I'm going to draw a square and we can enter a size of 500 pixels and come over to properties and right click reset parameter to center it up. I'm going to call this mask, removing the word rectangle and then I'm going to right click, duplicate. And I'm going to call this one animated mask. So let's animate the mask. Let's come over to properties. Let's come to 12 frames on the timeline. Let's click on the keyframe button there for position and enter an X value of 510. Let's come to the first frame and enter a value of negative 510. And let's come to 60 frames on the timeline. Let's hit the keyframe button. Let's come to the last frame and enter an X value of minus 510. So that moves the rectangle backwards and forwards across the main rectangle. So now what we want to do is come to the mask here, mask blend mode and set that to intersect. And what that does is it only shows up our color solid when the two rectangles are intersecting. So let's call this group box and then come to the top here and make a new group, object new group. And I'm going to bring my text out into that new group. And let's call this group text. Select the text. I'm going to come over to text format and I'm going to type my text, which is going to be Tokyo Productions Motion Tutorials, for example and just need to be able to see where that text is going to sit. So what I'm going to do is just make myself a guide for that. So I'm going to come down to the rectangle tool here. Again, hold down the shift key and draw out a rectangle. Come over to style here and turn off fill, turn on outline. Come to geometry, set the size to 500. Come to properties, reset parameter. I might just make the color back to style, make the color yellow so it stands out well. I'm going to call that rectangle guide because we're going to actually publish that when we make our final cut version. So let's select our text and let's move it into the box there and we can increase the size quite a bit, just adjust it till it's, well maybe not that much, adjust it into the box like that. So we can turn off the guide here, don't need that, and we're going to come to our color solid and we're going to right click add image mask. So we're going to have three masks in total. So the mask source for that is going to be my text. So I'm going to drag that into the text well there and I'm going to set the mask blend mode to subtract. And then if you scrub through, you'll see that that's cutting out a hole in our box. Okay, so we also need to see the text once it's revealed in white. So what we're going to do is select our text layer there and we're going to right click Make Clone Layer. And that will give us the text like that. 
we need to mask this clone layer so that we don't see it through here. Obviously, we want to keep our cutout version. So select the clone layer and right click, add image mask. And we're just going to mask it with the animated mask. So drag that into the source well. We need to remember to turn back on that animated mask cause uh, adding it to the source well has turned it off automatically. So let's turn that back on again. And then we need to come to our clone layer image mask and hit the invert mask button. And now you'll see we've got that white version where the, wherever the box is not. So this is almost finished, but if we come to the beginning, we don't want to be seeing any text until the box has hit the center of the screen. So how are we going to achieve that? Well, we could animate its opacity, but I'm going to do, show you something that's a little bit more funky. So I'm going to select that clone, come to Properties, I'm going to select the Opacity, right click, Add Parameter Behavior, Link. And what I'm going to do is link it to the animated mask. So drag the animated mask into the source well for the link. Come to Properties, Transform, Position, X, which is what we want to be driving it. So now if we look what happens, we don't see the text and then it starts to fade up. So we don't want it to fade up, we want it to cut up. So I'm going to set the scale to a randomly large number and that's going to be 100. And then if I press play, our animation works exactly as it's meant to. So what's happening there? I just want to clarify. What we're doing, if we look at the animated mask, until it's hit the center of the screen, its value is less than zero. So it's a negative value. So that is translated into zero opacity for our clone layer, because you obviously can't have negative opacity. Zero is the lowest number. But as soon as we hit a value above zero, our opacity shoots up to 100. And that's because we've added that multiplier to the link there. We've set the scale to 100% just to make sure that it shoots up to 100 instantly rather than that fade up that we were seeing earlier on. So you might wonder what's the point of that, but what it means is that if we come to our animated mask, open up our timeline editor here, if we wanted to slow down the animation, our link behavior is ensuring that our white title will always come on at the right point. Uh, and that's, that's one of the things I want to stress about this type of project is if you plan it out right, you can save yourself a lot of time and it becomes much easier to adapt. So let's look at building this as a Final Cut title. So first of all, let's set some build in, build out markers. So I'm going to come to 12 frames. I'm going to hit Shift M to set a marker there. I'm going to come to 60 frames and again hit Shift M to put a marker there. I'm going to come to Marker, Markers, Edit Marker. And I can set this type to build out mandatory. So that's going to be my end marker. I'm going to come to my first marker by hitting this arrow here. And I'm going to set that to build in mandatory. So what this is going to do is going to protect the duration of that 12 frame animation, regardless of how long this title is in Final Cut, because obviously we can stretch it out to be as long as we want, but we don't want that to affect the animation duration. OK, so the next thing I want to do is start thinking about what we want to publish. So first of all, let's publish this guide here, I think. So I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to come to the opacity. I'm going to right click. I'm going to add to rig, create new rig, add to new checkbox. And I'll call this checkbox guide. I'll hit the checkbox button and then I'll turn it off and then I'll set the guide opacity down to zero. And now if I toggle that checkbox, you can see our guide turning on and off. So let's leave it off and then come here and publish. So the other thing I want to do is to link the color of the text to the color of the box. So we can do that by coming to the text layer here, text, appearance, and clicking on the color swatch there, add parameter behavior link. And I'm going to drag the color solid into the source well, 
come to object color solid color all and now if we change the background color both change together so I'm going to reset that to oh no reset that to white and then we can publish this color so if we come to our project pane we can see that we've now got our guide and our color and there's just one other thing we want to do and that's to be able to position the text wherever we want on screen so I'm going to select that text layer I'm going to come to object new group and I'm going to call this all I'm going to close up the text close up the box and I'm going to bring those two into that all group and now what I can do is I can publish the position of the all group so I'm going to close that up because if you if you publish it when it's opened up then it will publish publish it like this and that's a bit messy I prefer to publish it like that so publish come back to the project pane here and you'll see we have our X and Y position and we can move it to wherever we want and the animation all works just perfectly so let's reset that to zero zero don't forget we've also got a Z value there which means that we can actually scale it as well if we want when we're in Final Cut okay so that's our title effect finished we can shoot over to Final Cut and see what it looks like so here we are in lovely Final Cut. I'm going to select my title. I'm going to hit Q to add it to my sequence here. And you'll see that we've got all the controls that we published. We've got our guide if we need that. And we've got our position controls. And we've got our color. And let's turn off the guide. If we press play, everything works as we'd hope. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to increase the Z value a lot. So it almost fills the frame and maybe just bring it down on Y and I think I'm going to increase the length of the animation and let's see how that plays and of course we could come in and if we wanted we can change the look of the text so I'm going to select motion tutorials and I'm just going to select a lighter weight of that font and I get that so there you go, that's a very simple title published for Final Cut Pro 10 with some interesting tricks along the way. So I hope that was interesting. Thanks very much indeed for watching and I hope to see you again another time.